welcome you all to the journey of the first flight. Yes, we take off with the first chapter. Generally, whenever you start something auspicious, we always take the name of God. And yes, coincidentally, our chapter is a letter to God. Now, this is all about faith, about your belief, about your trust, whether do you really think God exists? Well, that's for you to ponder upon, for you to think upon, for you to introspect whether how much do, do you have that faith in God? How much do you believe in the existence of God? Yeah. So with that, let's begin our very first chapter, A Letter to God by G. L. Fuentes. Now, before we've always moved on with our chapters, let's, you know, know a little about the author. The author who has written this chapter, let's know about him. Gregorio Lopez E. Fuentes was one of the most important chroniclers of the Mexican Revolution and its side effects. Now, chroniclers are those people who you know, get, in, they get the accounts of the historic events. Yeah. So he uh, wrote it down. He wrote about the Mexican Revolution and its effects. He first went to sea as a deck boy with his father at the age of 10. Now, at the age of 10, he went on ship with his dad. As a teenager, Fuentes worked on cargo ships that went out of the Canary Island to Trinidad and Puerto Rico. So he was there in Mexico and he traveled to all these places. He also sailed to the Spanish parts of Valencia and Sevilla to South America. So yes, wherever the cargo ships went, he traveled. He migrated permanently to Cuba at the age of 22. So finally, after moving around, you know, to so many places, he settled in Cuba at the age of 22. Now, what is this chapter all about? So this is the plot of your story. You will understand quite a bit by here, uh, from here itself, that what is the chapter all about? A letter to God is a story of extreme faith in God. See, there are people who have very good faith, strong faith in God. Yeah, so this is about that. The writer G.L. Fuentes has tried to depict the faith of a poor and simple farmer in God. Lencho is an honest and hardworking farmer. Now here we are talking about this farmer who is very hardworking, he's honest and he has strong faith in God. He is shocked to notice that his crop is ruined. He turns to God for getting some help. Generally when you don't find anybody, you look at God. He writes a letter to God. Now see his faith. How do you know he strongly believes? He writes a letter to God, posts the letter. When an employee of the post office chanced to see the letter addressed to God. So on the envelope, he wrote to God. He makes fun of the letter. He says, strange. Who has written a letter to God? He makes fun of it. The postmaster, the senior person over there who is actually working there at the senior most post, he took it seriously. He took the letter seriously and decided to answer the letter. He collected money from his employees to give in charity to the needy farmer. So basically you know what was in that letter. He was able to collect only 70 pesos and thought that the farmer would be pleased to receive the money. Now that's the currency, pesos, we know the currency out there. So yeah, he thought I'm sending him some money. I'm sure he's going to be happy about it. But to his disappointment, he was shocked to notice that it made Lencho angry. That's funny, that's strange. Why did he get angry? Lencho writes another letter to God. Now you, he thinks God is literally doing it. He's responding, you know, he's reverting, he's replying. So he writes another letter to God, but with a message not to send the money by post. Now this time he's telling God, look, don't send the money by post. For him, the employees of the post office were a bunch of crooks who had stolen 30 pesos from the money sent by God. So can you guess it out? Can you figure it out? How much did he ask for? How much did he receive? How much he thinks, he thinks according to the farmer that these people are a bunch of crooks. Crooks means thieves, right? 
thieves, robbers. So he thinks they are, they have stolen his 30 pesos. So let's know the story at length. Let's know the story in detail. It's really interesting if you, uh, you know, go through it word by word, line by line and understand the whole thing, you're going to really enjoy it. Also, the words that you see highlighted are the words where the meaning has been given here. So, you know, you tend to understand better when you know what every word actually means. And you being at this level, you should also make sure that these words which are given right here. Now, these, the, the same presentation will be there in your notes as well. You can refer to them time and time again and increase your vocabulary. So see these words, they are very practically based words. You can use them in your creative writing. It adds to your credentials as in it will fetch you extra points. So when you write rich vocabulary, your creative writing gets way more sophisticated. Yeah, the quality, the level of that creative writing increases and it gets you more marks. So this is a very smart move. You should underline the vocabulary in your creative writing and the checker will really be impressed and give you additional points. So yes, go for it. Now, let's start the chapter. The house, the only one in the entire valley, sat on the crest of a low hill. Crest as in on the top of a hill. It, that house was situated there. From this height, one could see the river and the field of ripe corn dotted with the flowers that always promised a good harvest. So from there, you had a very beautiful view. The view you, was that you could see the river and of course you could see that entire field which that you know the farmer had harvest, um, put up there. You could see the ripe corn, the corn which was ready, it was ripe. Yeah, it was dotted with flowers. There were certain flowers on that. And from there, you can understand that it is going to be a very good harvest. That's a sign. Yeah, the only thing the earth needed was a downpour. They needed a heavy fall of rain or at least a shower. So see, when it's farmer, it's all about rain. It's all about, you know, uh, the crops. So the the crop was pretty ready and all that the farmer was looking for was for a rainfall and then his crop would be amazingly rich throughout the morning lencho the farmer who knew his fields intimately intimately as in in a way that involves detailed knowledge or close relationship he knew his field his things very very well because he had been doing this work since years together had done nothing else but see the sky towards the northeast. So he was expecting the rains to come from the northeast. Now we are really going to get some water woman. Woman as in he's talking to his wife. He says, ah, now looking at the northeast, I feel I'm expecting rain. The woman who was preparing supper, that's a light dinner, replied, yes, God willing. Of course, if God wishes, it will definitely come. The older boys were working in the field while the smaller ones were playing near the house until the woman called to them all, come for dinner. So the ch some of the elder uh, children were in the, in the farm, they were working, whereas the others were near the house. The younger ones were near the house, they were playing and so the lady of the house calls everyone for dinner. Says, come on, let's have dinner. It was during the meal that just as Lencho had predicted, he had said it's going to rain. Big drops of rain began to fall. So while they were having the meal, yeah, they were taking their meal. That was the time big drops of rain began to fall. In the northeast, huge mountains of clouds could be seen approaching. He could see the dark clouds. You know, when it is rainy, we know how the day becomes very gloomy. It becomes dark. So yes, he was there on top of the hill and he could see it. So yes, he saw those clouds. The air was fresh and sweet. The man went out for no other reason than to have the pleasure of feeling the rain on his body. And when he returned, he exclaimed. He shouted, he went out, he wanted to feel the rain on himself. But he came back and he exclaimed, he shouted, these aren't raindrops falling from the sky. They are new coins. New coins from the sky? Well, the big drops are 10 cent pieces 
and the little ones are fives. What do you mean? He called those raindrops, which are not raindrops, he called them as coins. And why did he refer to the bigger coins as 10 cents? Sorry, the bigger drops as 10 cents and the smaller as fives. This is going to fetch them money. Because as soon as the rain falls, the crop will be nice and ready to harvest and that will get him money. So he refers to the raindrops as coins. That's why he refers to them as money. Yeah. With a satisfied expression, he regarded the field of ripe corn with its flowers draped in a curtain of rain. Draped as in covered, sort of covered with cloth. But now remember this was not, so you can see that they, it was not raindrops. It was hailstorm, like, you know, pieces of snow. So he, with a very sad, he was happy. He was sort of, you know, glad that it finally came. So he regarded it like, you know, he saw those flowers. He saw them draped in a curtain of rain. So all the snow had fallen and it had covered the entire crop. But suddenly what happened? A strong wind began to blow. And along with the rain, very large hailstones began to fall. Now, that was something which was definitely uninvited. It was not even expected. Large pieces, large hailstones, you know, they started to fall and there was strong breeze blowing. These truly did resemble new silver coins. Resemble, of course, became similar to that. They were like the new silver coins. He thought there will be something like that will really fetch him a lot. The boys expo uh, exposing themselves to the rain ran out to collect the frozen pearls. Frozen pearls. Now, pearls are white and frozen because it was ice. So you see, they were pieces of ice, right? So they went to collect those. It's really getting bad now, exclaimed the man. I hope it passes quickly. He says, oh my God, if this continues, there's going to be a lot of problem. It better stop. Now, if there is more, there'll be more of hailstone. There'll be more of, you know, snow coming, snowballs, those uh, flakes of snow. It's going to be a problem to the crop. It better stop. He was just hoping, wishing and praying. It did not pass quickly, unfortunately, it did not. For an hour, the hail rained on the house, the garden, the hillside, the cornfield, on the whole valley. This hail went on, this hailstorm went on for an hour. The field was absolutely white, it all got covered with snow, as if covered with salt, white in color. Not a leaf remained on the trees. Everything was covered. The corn was totally destroyed. The flowers were gone from the plants. Lencho's soul was filled with sadness. See, when it is a farmer, when he, you know, sows the seeds and then he nurtures, he puts the best soil, he expects a good harvest. He expects a good crop to come up, rich crop enough to make him rich. Rich in the sense, at least fetch him some money. But when something like this unexpectedly happens, it is something he has worked so hard to get that money. And if it does not happen to him, you can imagine the, the height of sadness in him. He was feeling so bad about the whole thing. When the storm had passed, he stood in the middle of the field and said to his sons, a plague of locusts would have left more than this. He says, if this field would have been attacked by a plague of locusts, we know what's a plague of locusts, right? These are insects which fly in big swarms, like in big groups and they destroy crops. So plague is the collective number. So when all of them come together, they attack the crops. Yeah. So he's saying if they would have come instead of the snow, they would have left at least something. But this snow left us nothing. Everything is destroyed. The hail has left nothing. This year, we will have no corn. So it's these crops, you know that it takes long, you know, for them to grow. They do not grow in days. It takes them months. Yeah. So the whole uh, procedure of doing the whole thing and in the end facing this, 
after a tedious thing of probably four, six, eight months, depending on the crop, this is what the farmer had to face. That night was a sorrowful one for the farmer and for his family. All our work for nothing. There's no one who can help us. We'll all go hungry this year. He says all the work that we did was for nothing. We got nothing out of it. There's no one who can help us. Who will help us? How will we eat? How will we survive? We'll all go hungry this year. But in the hearts of all who lived in that solitary house, solitary as in the only house, in the middle of the valley, there was a single hope, help from God. So, you know, when you are surrounded with trouble and there's no one, no one, no one to help you, there's absolutely no one. Ultimately, we all look up. We all look up towards God. So God, see, God does not come himself to help you out. Remember this. It's always, I'm talking out of my experience. He will not come to you himself. He will come to you through somebody. So some person will get inspiration, of course, a person known to you. And somehow suddenly he'll just come and, you know, help you solve your things. It does happen. Keep faith. It does. So yes, he felt the same. So the farmer felt the only hope is God. Don't be so upset, even though this seems like a total loss. He says, yes, it's an entire loss. Absolutely zero. But don't be so upset. Remember, no one dies of hunger. Nobody. God always makes sure that, see, when a child is in a mother's womb, even there the child is given food. The child is taken care of. So if there God can give you food, when you are right here on earth, he will definitely give you food. So no one dies of hunger. That was the faith. That was the belief of the farmer. That's what they say. No one dies of hunger. All through the night, Lencho thought only of his one hope, the only and only hope, the help of God, whose eyes, as he had been instructed, see everything, even what is deep in one's conscience, as in the inner sense of right and wrong. You know, it's your conscience that tells you. Yeah, what is right? What is wrong? We all have that feeling. We all get it. Yeah, it is. It so happens that sometimes you want to believe it. Sometimes you listen to it and sometimes you don't. So that is one problem for it. You know, you if you know you are doing something wrong, your inner voice tells you that do don't do it. This is not the right thing. But some, you know, something out of desire, out of desperation, we land up doing some things which we are not supposed to do. Yeah, the inner voice tells you. So you need to listen to that inner voice and respect it. So he says, look, I know it's I have been instructed like he had grown up with that culture. Probably his parents taught him this, that whatever is in, you know, God knows it all. Lencho was an ox of a man, ox of a man as in he was strong and hardworking. He didn't give up. He didn't lose hope. He did not become a coward. Oh my God, I'm, it's all gone. Nothing. There was nothing of that. He was an ox of a man working like an animal in the fields, but still he knew how to write. Yes, though he was a farmer, he at least knew how to write. The following Sunday at daybreak, he began to write a letter which he himself would carry to town and place in the mail. It was nothing less than a letter to God. He now finds it. He says, that's the only hope I have. I am going to ask God to help me out. God, he wrote, if you don't help me, my family and I will go hungry this year. I need a hundred pesos. You know, that's the uh, currency of several Latin American countries. That's how they address it. Like we have rupees and pesos. So he says, I need a hundred pesos in order to sow my field again and to live until the crop comes. Now he will have to again sow more seeds and he will have to survive till that crop grows up and gets him money. But till then he needs a hundred pesos because the hail storm and then he wrote the whole story to God. He wrote to God on the envelope. So on the envelope he wrote to God, put the letter inside and still troubled went to town. He himself went to town to post that. At the post office, he placed a stamp on the letter and he dropped it into the mailbox. See the belief. 
see the faith he writes it to him he expects help from him he puts he writes to god he puts the stamp on it and he literally puts it in the mailbox well yes that is faith one of the employees who was a postman and also helped at the post office went to his boss laughing heartily and showed him the letter to god he says oh my god just look someone has dropped this letter and it's written to god so he gives it to his boss never in his career as a postman had he known that address he says i reached to so many places but where do i go here to god where do i go the postmaster a fat amiable fellow amiable as in a very friendly and a pleasant man you know also broke out laughing even he started laughing he says oh my god that is strange but almost immediately he turned serious and tapping the letter on his desk he commented he says what faith this is height of faith this person who has written the letter to god thinks that this letter will reach god and solve his problem i wish i had the faith of the man who wrote this letter starting up a correspondence with god correspondence as in a communication by exchanging letters he says wow i wish i had the same faith as this man who has you know things he can communicate to god so in order not to shake the writer's faith in god the postmaster came up with an idea he says i don't want him to lose faith so let's do something about it he says let's answer the letter but when he opened it it was evident that to answer it he needed something more than goodwill ink and paper so when he read the letter he realized he says look it's not just about replying to this letter it's not just ink and paper that i need but as per the request in the letter i also need some money that's what that was what he had asked for the farmer but he stuck to his resolution he says never mind if that's the case i shall do that he asked for money from his employees he himself gave part of his salary and several friends of his were obliged to give something for an act of charity all of them were happy to give certain amount of money how much ever people could afford he himself also gave a part of his salary it was impossible for him to gather together the 100 pesos he says now i definitely cannot uh, you know gather the whole amount but yes he was able to send the farmer only a little more than half little more than half as in 70 yeah he uh, half is 50 so 70 was a little more than half he put the money in an envelope addressed to lencho and with it a letter containing only a single word as a signature god he did not write anything all that he wrote in that letter was god and with that he put the 70 pesos uh, so yeah 70 pesos the following sunday lencho came a bit earlier than usual to ask if there was a letter from him for him he felt he says okay now by now god must have received and i'm sure he must have reverted he must have replied so he went a little more you know pretty early and he went and asked them is there a letter for me some letter must have come it was the postman himself who handed the letter to him while the postmaster experiencing the contentment of a man who has performed a good deed looked on from his office now the post it was the postman himself who gave this letter to lencho he gave it to him and experiencing the contentment he was feeling happy the postmaster that i have done something great i have done a wonderful deed i have done something an action which is performed intention uh, intentionally or consciously so yes he was getting that satisfaction that i have done something and he looked on from his office he was looking to see his reaction Lencho showed not the slightest surprise on seeing the money. Lencho like he saw the money but he was not surprised. Such was his confidence. He was so sure. But he became angry when he counted the money. Now why he got angry? We know he was he had asked for 100 and he received 70. God could not have made a mistake nor could he have denied Lencho what he had requested. He says I am so sure. God will never make this mistake. 
I've asked for 100, he will give me 100. I know that. He says, nor could he have denied, he will never refuse. He will give me how much I want, he will give me how much I have asked for and he will not even deny, he will not even refuse what he had requested. Immediately, Lencho went up to the window to ask for paper and ink. He again went up there, he went for, he asked for paper and ink. On the public writing table, you can see him there, he started to write with much wrinkling of his brow. You know, he was doing this and he was writing something. Caused by the effort he had to make to express his ideas. So he was writing a little angrily. So when he was doing that, he had his brows together and was, there were wrinkles on that. So that was showing that he's upset. When he finished, he went to the window to buy a stamp which he licked and then affixed to the envelope with a blow of his fist. He did that. He wrote it. He was a little angry. He put the stamp on it and again he affixed the envelope right with a blow of his fist. The moment the letter fell into the mailbox, the postmaster went to open it. He says, I want to see what he has written because he had only done it. So he wanted to see what's going on. It said, what did it say? God, of the money that I asked for, only 70 pesos reached me. He says, I asked you for 100, you have sent me 70. Send me the rest. He's not asking for more, he's saying, send me the rest, which is 30. Since I need it very much. He says, I need 100, I cannot go with 70. But don't send it to me through the mail because the post office employees are a bunch of crooks. He says, don't mail. Don't send it through the mail because here these employees at the post office, they are a bunch of thieves. They are a bunch of robbers. And then he writes his name. So the postmaster actually gave his best. He did not want to disappoint Lencho for any reason. And so he helped him out. He did a good deed. He felt he would be happy. But see the misunderstanding. Lencho treats them only as crooks. He did not realize that God can come to you in any form. God will not come himself down right in front of you. So this is what I told you right in the beginning. God comes in some form or the other. For Lencho, God came in the form of the postmaster. The postmaster got the inspiration from God. Right. And that is the reason he did that. He collected the money from everybody and he got it for him. But unfortunately, for Lencho, he did not realize that God is there for him, helping him. He just took them as crooks. Well, a little disappointing, but that does not shake our faith. We have to keep our faith going strong. Yeah, this was a little misunderstanding which Lencho came across. So yeah, what do we learn? God is most glorified in us when we are most satisfied in him. A beautiful quote by John Piper. He says he is most glorified in us when we are most satisfied in him. We are happy. We are absolutely content with whatever God has given us. We don't need to crib. We don't need to complain. We need to be happy with what Ever he has gifted us be it family be it house be it your cars your phones the food irrespective whatever materialistic gains you have whatever you have been gifted with be happy with the same yeah so I hope you are happy with the way this lesson went on I hope you enjoyed it there are going to be a number of lessons coming up after this so stay tuned Keep watching and keep learning.